Hello learners and welcome to a video tutorial about horizontal projectiles. So <clears throat> in order for a problem to have a horizontal projectile, there are a couple key things that the problem can say that are clues that you're dealing with a horizontal projectile. For instance, an object rolls off a flat surface. Because in order for it to be a horizontal projectile, it needs to have an initial velocity that is only horizontal, or only in the x direction. So rolling off of a horizontal table would give an object that horizontal velocity. So this vx is the initial velocity that the object starts with rolling off of the flat surface. Now, some key assumptions that we're going to make. One is that the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. Because what we're going to neglect, for the most part, is air resistance. Now, when that ball rolls off, the instant it leaves the table, it has an acceleration in the y direction of g. Whatever gravity is on that planet, that's the acceleration. Now, that acceleration is happening on that object always directed down. So anywhere that ball is on, the, on its path, it's got an acceleration directed down. And as long as we stay near the surface of the Earth, that acceleration is going to be constant. Always directed down, not affecting how the ball moves through the horizontal or through the x dimension. So, the acceleration in the x we are going to say is zero. Now, because of that assumption, we can really only use one kinematic for the x dimension. And that is delta x equals v naught t plus one half a x t squared. And that's v naught x. But since acceleration is zero, this just gives us delta x equals v naught x t or distance equals velocity times time. So for the x dimension, this is really the only equation that you will have at your disposal. Now, sadly, not really sadly, for the y dimension, you can use all the kinematics because that acceleration in the y dimension will be held constant. So let's do an example problem. Let's say I have a flat surface and I have a ball rolling off of that surface with an initial velocity of 2 meters per second. And it rolls off and it lands a certain distance away, a certain delta x. And that's what I want. How far away from the table will that ball land? Now, key piece of information that I will need is where did the ball start? At what height? Okay. And so let's say my height is just one meter. So I've got a one meter high table, ball rolls off at two meters per second, where will it land off of that table? Well, if I want to know where it will land the delta x, well, I only have one equation at my disposal, and that is delta x equals vx t. Well, I know vx, it's this v naught. That's the only speed it has in the x direction. And, check this, it will always be moving at 2 meters per second in the x dimension. However, it begins to fall. So its y velocity will change, but its x velocity will remain constant. And I'll show you an example of this in the next video tutorial. So, I know vx, but I don't know time. In order, in order to get time, I'm going to use this height. Now, let's think about what we know. I know the height. I know that my initial y velocity is zero. So v naught y equals zero. I know my height, and I also know the acceleration, and I want time. So I could use delta y equals v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. This term will disappear. You plug in height, you plug your acceleration, whatever it may be, depending on what planet you're on, and you can solve for time. 
That will be the fall time. Even if this ball was launched at 4,000 meters per second, it would still have the same fall time because Vx isn't in the equation where we solve for time. So the only thing that affects the fall time is the height and what type of gravity you have. Okay, now let's talk about the position versus time graphs for a horizontal projectile. And let's first start with our y position versus time. And again, this is for this scenario where we have a ball, initial velocity is only in the x, and it launches off of a flat surface, or is fired horizontally. Okay, y position versus time. My object starts at a certain height, so my graph should also start at a certain height, and my initial y velocity is zero. So that means that my initial slope needs to be zero, but its y velocity increases, so my slope of the tangent also needs to increase. And we've done this graph before over and over with an object that's just falling down because that's basically what this object is doing. It's falling, but it's also moving forward. Now, what about its x position versus time? Let's say that the edge of the table is x equals 0. Okay, that means that my object needs to start at x equals 0. Now, I know that there is no acceleration in the x direction, which means I won't get a parabolic position graph for the x. It will actually be linear. So, in the next video tutorial, I'll show you actual tracking of a horizontal projectile, and you'll be able to see those position versus time graphs in real time.